I record these. There's no video, which is probably good for me, but <laughs> no, no video around me, I should say. It captures the audio, it's recording the screen, and whatever we write on the screen, whatever we do. So what I try to do is repeat people's questions, because that doesn't really get picked up as a huge microphone on the computer. And then I post these to YouTube, and I'll show you where those get posted later. Yeah. Let's go over that quiz. Let's be good about it. John Kelts. Is that what everyone got? No, I'm just kidding. To lab instructor. I guess I'm a lab instructor, so there you go. I'm my own lab instructor. Oops, spelled my name wrong, though. Why do we put? Why do we ask for lab instructor? You may ask. It's because that's how most material in this course will be handed back to you. Because I used to try to hand things back to 175 people. It didn't really go that well. And the alternative way, where you just throw out a pile of papers in a pan and just lay them out there for people, is technically a violation of privacy. So we try to avoid that. The way we do that is to hand them back to the 20 class. Uh, if you do not have a lab instructor, which there are several reasons that that might happen, so the whole session. Some people transfer into the lab and also take time. I, you can get them from me. I'll have them in my office and I'll try to bring them to the lab and I'm going to get them. Number three. Sig figs in 0 0.0250 kilograms. Why did I circle it? Because you've got to make life easy for your graders. It's not that they're going to you know, try and take points off. If you got something right, you can make your life easy for them. Three point two six equals three point eight six plus log x. Come on. Log is log base what? That's right. It's a good thing it wasn't E because I can't do that with my hands. So you tend to the both sides, a verb of my own invention. Point six, negative. Tend to the. Yeah, multiply both sides by 12. If that makes more sense. 12 times 1.4 times 10 to the negative fourth equals y squared. And here you can either solve it in one step or you can step it through. times 1.4 e negative 4 equals square root y equals 0 0.041. And you can scientific notation it if you'd like. Help each other figure it out. Awesome. Figure it out on your own using the Google or the 
us tonight. Awesome. Or come see me or any of the instructors, the highest institutors. Get it figured out because we want the points. That's the quiz. Typically, we will have them first thing Thursday. We have, I know today is Tuesday, but we'll typically have them first thing Thursday. You'll come in, I'll have a poorly cut stack of paper available for you, and you can always use your own. And we'll punch it out in the first 10 minutes, then we'll go over it. It will always be material, except for this one, from the lecture before. So the reason I do it open notes is because you just pick those notes. And it should be right there for you to check and apply it to something so it's different. It's easy to be excited. Okay. Good. I was once told never go to a meeting that doesn't have an agenda. It's good advice. I'm not perfect about making agendas, but I, I get the spirit of that. You don't want to go into a room and spend an hour doing it. Well, you don't know what. So I want to do an intro to Chem 111 in the syllabus, talk about jobs, which I like to do, because let's, let's, be, let's cut to it. You're here to get through this and get to a job. You're not here to do just this. I like this. I hope you like it at least a little bit, but we're here to get you through. Do some problem solving, then we'll start kinetics, which is our first chapter. I want to talk about, I want to introduce myself, but first I'd like to introduce the Instructional Student Assistance, which is ISA. So, Lisa and Alicia, why don't you stand up and introduce yourselves to the group, if you would. Uh, I'm Lisa. I'm a bio major and I'm an instructional student assistant. We're here to help you, so, help folks out. Yeah. So, so we, we team great. Sometimes one or two other people will pop in to help you grade the quizzes, by which I mean grade the quizzes, and help you grade the exams. But they're not graders. They're hired as student assistants. So they're here to assist you. So we'll use them in class. We'll use them a little bit outside of class. They're another resource. I want to be a resource for you to help you with I mean, anything in chemistry and careers, but certainly the material in this class. But the reason we provide multiple resources is because different things work for different people. If my style doesn't work for you, I will not do it so. If my schedule doesn't work with yours, it's bad, but life happens. I won't be insulted by that either. These are good people. The lab instructors are good people. The Cooperative Learning Center has good people that I'll introduce to you next week. I uh, added one recently that I'm very excited about. Good. A lot of people here to help you. Use them. And without much further ado, let's, let's talk about this. Let's see if I can make that a little bigger. A friend once said, chemistry is the science of electrons. You know, I'm not sure how much to take away from that at this age, but we talk about the elements, we talk about molecules, but what really determines what happens in a reaction is the electrons. Here's some of the stuff that I have done. In my undergraduate work, I was a chemistry major and went in thinking about chemistry, chemical engineering, philosophy, and film. I took intro of film studies, found out I like movies, not films. Check. <laughs> I took intro to philosophy, I took intro to ethics, thought this is awesome. I do not want to think about this all day. Check. Chemistry and chemical engineering, like both. Emailed a bunch of professors in both saying, can we chat and see what you're doing? All the chemical engineers said, yeah, you know, okay. Um, I'm available two weeks from now, and I think we can make time and we can chat on this. And the chemist said, come to our happy hour. Come to our group meeting. I have, to, I have six students who are working on this. You've got to get in there. And they were just so excited about what they did that I couldn't help. I made some molecules, I shot x-rays at crystals, I tapped on surfaces with a, basically a record player that's the size of a couple of molecules, that was neat. Uh, I want to emphasize that my GPA, it was that great, it was okay, but don't get super hung up if your GPA is not what you want it to be. It's not the end all be all. Particularly if you're interested in going into research, research is at least as important as it is. A GPA went up at the end, which is another thing to remember, because once you get to the 400 level, it's all classes you like. And they, frankly, they tend to be really high. So people, uh, you know, you guys are, anyone who's enrolled in my 400 level <coughs> class, looks and compares that with 111, they're like, I'll take 400 all day. So stick through it. You get off a good enough point to get to the end. Then I, <laughs> the bullet point I did not put out there is that I was a professional musician for a year and a half. You can't see him on the video of professionals, of course. We played some music, we had a good time, we ran out of money, so back to plan A. I went to 
graduate school for chemistry, I studied how nature gets electrons in and out of molecules really, really quickly. The short answer of how to do that is something we will talk about later in the genetics section, which is you can make the activation energy zero. You can make it so there's zero barrier for getting electrons in and out. That's fast, that's good. Um, the other way you can do it is to make something called the frequency factor fair. We'll talk about those in that section of genetics. I then did about six months as what's called a postdoc. Often now when you're done with your PhD, you will go to a different institution and do something different. Get continued research, maybe get some more mentoring experience. So I went from fundamental chemistry to trying to turn carbon dioxide into a fuel, which is really fun. Turns out you can do it, but the gas you make is like 15 to 20 bucks a gallon. So you, you can do it, but it's hard to be marketable currently. So we're working on making it possible. Anyway, work in progress. Then I worked in a startup company of about 25 people. We made a tractor trailer sized battery, actually like six tractor trailers, so a big battery. And this is big enough to store the energy for the wind turbine, one of the big ones you see in the calculus. Or big enough to store the energy to do backup for a hospital or a city block, something like that. So lots and lots and lots of energy. And it's fun because they start like this big as a prototype, and it's not even enough. I mean, it's less than one watt. So it's just not. That company was bought by Lockheed Martin, which I always thought of as like <coughs> planes and missiles. And they do that. It turns out they're interested in energy too because they operate quite a few forward operating bases and are responsible for making sure the lights stay on, which is where you'll see a lot of jobs. So they're interested in energy too. And the work continues and the batteries get bigger and bigger, which has been fun to see. Now I'm here. I have a lab here where I mentor undergraduates in lab research. Actually, both Lisa and Alicia have done research with me. Lisa just submitted a paper last week. We're excited about that. It was assigned to an editor. And then six months from now, we'll find out whether it was good enough. So it takes time. We do many types of research. To, um, for the most part, we're focused on energy and water. It's all lab work. There's very little theoretical work, very little computer work. We do batteries for energy storage, both for good scale and for transportation. We measure not pH, but pOH. We'll talk about that in today's chapter. Uh, we study antioxidants and chemical fuels, but we study them not in a lab. In, in Chem 111L and 1 ML and any other lab course, you're going to be like, you can do your plate one motor this and that, and nitrate your plate one motor this. It's like, that's not what the cell is. That's not what's in a plant. That's not what's in a stream. So we're trying to mimic natural environments much more closely and see what the molecules do to make those like. And we can see it in chemistry. We have a website. It's not. It's nothing special. It's just a Weebly site. Okay. Where can you find syllabus? I learn. That's right. In the syllabus, you will find topics and schedule at the end. You will find resources. You will find where to find those resources. You will find what the assessments are and how much they're worth. So I learned will calculate your grade, because I have set it up to do so, but you can do so at any time also with the percentage it's a weighted average. So you can set it up the way it's set up in the syllabus. Mastering chemistry is how we will do the homework. There are two course IDs posted at the Highlander. Try them with the code they have, the access code they have. If neither of those work for your access code, if you know that access code is still valid, let me know. There is almost always a way around it. So as long as you have a code, if it's from like a different book, and you transfer it in, almost always a way around it. So let me know. So we'll work it out. Not a problem. If you don't have an access code, you can often buy one from someone who has completed Chem 111 and doesn't want it anymore. And it's cheaper than buying a new one. If you have to buy a new one and you have semesters left, next semester you can tell me, and I will sell it to someone who is in this room. Same goes with the textbook. Um, we use Tro, a molecular approach. Any edition will do where you can find cheapest on eBay or Amazon or what have you, which is just fine. And then when you're done, if you look at that thing and you're like, you know what, I don't need this, tell me next year and I'll help you sell it to someone. Circle of life. Let's look at the syllabus just a little bit. I learned pictures of cats. What else? Okay, chemistry. Okay, syllabus is there. We also have a news forum where I will send emails like, hey, I screwed this up, it's actually due next Tuesday, things like that. It's usually pretty mechanical things come on the news forum. Um, I give you what I call equation sheets. So on the exams in this course, we give you most of the equations to work with because we're assessing application. 
If you want to have exactly what you'll have on the exam while you practice the homework, while you practice the quizzes, whatever, they're there. So if you want to practice like a play, that's a good place to do that. In the equation sheets. Uh, if the, so the lab 111L has quite a bit of practice built into it in the dry lab and worksheets. I also post them here so that they're all in one place and it's easy to get to. Practice exams and keys. Some people here are in fraternity. Some people here are in sorority. Some people here are in sports teams. Some people here have friends. I know. I once had friends too. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I still do. Um, so some of you will have some exams from semesters past. Part of life. So I give them to everybody. I just post them here. I have the keys posted for most of them. It may shift a little bit the way that I post the keys, but I want you to at least be able to check whether you have the answers right. So that's stuff to be available to everyone in the class. And if you think there's something that's asymmetric that you should have that someone else has, let me know. I will make sure everybody has it. I have no problem with that. YouTube channel for last semester. Not exactly at the beginning, but a couple of weeks in, I started recording all the lectures. So those are, I mean, they're still there, right? YouTube is archives of people's things on my cat or whatever it is, you know, all sorts of stuff on YouTube. But that stuff includes the lectures from last semester, most of them. So if you want to see what's coming at least the way it was last semester, you can always watch those. I will make a channel for this semester, so I'll upload this. Usually not the night of, usually the next day I'll have it uploaded. Um, the book gives me a PowerPoint pre-made, which I don't use. It's like they give you like 200 slides for each chapter. But one way of thinking about the slide deck is that it's sort of like the book in PowerPoint format. So if you want the content of the book, but the format doesn't work for you, or you don't have the book yet, or something like that, you can use that folder in PowerPoint slides for basically exact, almost exactly what it's in the book. Well, so the book is, I mean, I'm not going to come check. Like, you owning the book is not worth points. I will say that the book is valuable. We're going to do a little more work this semester than I've done in the past in trying to make it more useful to you. Every semester I try and a little bit harder, try to fix to try and make it useful. So we're going to do some more of that. But there have been people that don't have it. It's pretty strongly recommended that you have access to it, but it's not, I mean, it's not worth points in and of itself. I do an online problem solving forum that's a Google Doc. And this worked really well last semester. And every semester I'll get emails, and that's fine. I answer email, um, and I try to be as quick as I can about it. But often people have, you're not the only one with that question, right? Often people are wondering the same thing, even ranging from like, when is the lab due to how do I solve this problem? If you are logged into your CSUMB Gmail, you should have access to this. I tested it, so it actually should work with someone else. Type your questions down here. I'll pop in and answer. And you're welcome to answer each other's questions. Um, respect for the other in the class and online is required if you're uh, not by disrespect. This is a great place to check. We filled out like 35 pages worth of material last semester on questions and answers. I like the Google form because it's really easy to post like a screenshot or a picture of something you drew, or you can even insert, I think it's insert view or insert drawing. You have a tablet, you need to draw right on the page for problem solving, which is pretty good. Back to iLearn. Uh, then there's Mastering Chemistry course IDs, um, so try those. Once we have the Cooperative Learning Center tutors geared up with a schedule, those will be posted on iLearn as well. So this is here. Okay, there's how to find me. That's my office phone, a couple of links. See, is there anything else I need in the syllabus? I don't think so. So course learning outcomes and then the bullet point outcomes for each chapter are here. These are under, bless you, these are underutilized by students. This is essentially how I make the exams. People always ask, can I have a study guide? And I always say no, but you basically already do. And that I don't tell you exactly what the problems will be, but I tell you how what categories they are. I would use that. Points to letter grades, how much each assessment is worth. Um, so the problem set you're mastering chemistry, but I always make some time for people to get the access codes sorted out. So the first problem set will be 
a, I think, a Google quiz. So I'll send that out so you have a couple of weeks to get the Mastering Chemistry together um, so everyone will have access to that. Policies, uh, SDR accommodations, study hall is great, cooperative learning center, just rather off what is in here. And then the schedule. Questions or thoughts about the syllabus? I know it's small, I'm not intending that you can actually read it from here, just sort of showing you what's where. Good. No. Okay. Very good. So if you require accommodation, that's okay. Get me the form, have me sign it, and then get me a copy so I know what you need. Please do remind me of the accommodations you need before you need them. So it's, the more time I have to make them happen, the better they will be. Um, exam accommodation time is Friday afternoon from 4 to 7. If this doesn't work for you, come see me in the little workshop. Okay. Too many words here. I need to work on that. Start with the why. You're individuals. How many chem majors in this room? I was. I get it. I get it. None of you are chem majors, right? <coughs> you got a lot of bio, a lot of marine science, a lot of environmental science, a fair number of kinesiology, a couple of computer science this semester. Do we have a business? We have a business in house. You're all here to do chemistry in the service of see this as a group of, of individuals, not a sea of people. My aim is to know every single one of you by name. I think I can do it this semester, because I did it the last time the class was 90 people, which is not good anymore. When it was 175, I confess I did not achieve that goal. I tried. I met a lot of people, but I didn't know everyone. This semester, I think I can do it. I'm going to try. We are here, and by we, I mean the people who are here to support you here because we believe in the power of the collection of individuals, not in a sea of people, not in a sea of ideas. And not only believe, I have actually seen for a fact that diverse problem-solving strategies is good. Universities talk a lot about diversity. That's good. There's a lot of reasons diversity is good. I believe diversity is good for chemistry, which is not something that gets talked about a lot. In industry, we had a set of chemical conditions that would sometimes release poison gas. That's bad. We set about trying to prevent that from happening. Because preventing poison gas is good. We took everyone we could find in the company that had trained in different places, that grew up in different places, that had every different background imaginable in every sense you could find, and just threw us all at it, working together with it individually. And we solved it faster we were a diverse group of people. And I really believe that we may have actually saved a life because of diversity in chemistry problem solving. So I think that the power of diversity goes beyond the ways that we often talk about it to really concrete examples. And I think I've seen that to be true. We're here to practice. So if your strategy isn't working, try again, but don't work 12 hours on an homework assignment. Work a couple hours on it and then get some help on the ones you don't understand yet. Try new strategies is good. I would say to practice, but I'd also say to practice with people that you can learn from. I've seen groups study for chemistry for this course that really push each other and then help each other work in complementary ways and teach each other aspects of this. And I've also seen people show their favorite SpongeBob character to the other person while studying. Like, okay, you know, it's good to goof off. I watched some Simpsons myself, but you gotta, you gotta work with people that help you get better. And so, if you're looking for that, I can help you find it. If you're having trouble finding it, you're going to have to know what to Do take notes in class. Uh, the PowerPoint slides will be available before class. I'll show you a couple of ways to print them if you like. If you have a tablet, you can take notes on that. If you have paper, you can take notes on that. Whatever works for you, it's totally cool. Is it reasonable to learn everything in this class hearing it once? I had a 
can force myself to say this out loud because it's it's different when you say it out loud. You say like, you know, I'm I'm in the college. I can I can study. This is not my first college class. But still, it's just not reasonable to expect yourself to learn many topics. So it's just a couple of topics. Okay, well, each one. The lecture is good. This cannot be your only the only way you learn the material. The book is the main one that we press. The book in the lab. Other resources are good. If you like the Khan Academy videos, cool. We're gonna start making some as well. But if you like other videos on the internet or other instructors, great. More is more. But you really have to find some other way. And what has worked the best for the most people is trying to get familiarity with it. Not trying to understand it completely, but trying to get familiarity before we talk about it in lecture. Because then when we're in here doing the application, doing the problem, doing the example, every word is new. It's been very powerful for a lot of people. The other thing, another thing we talk about at the university level a lot is student success. And both of those are capitalized, which always confuses me a little bit because it seems like that's a success, right? But we talk about student success as like a proper noun. And I was asking, like, what? I mean, like, okay, passing is success, but can we go beyond that a little bit? I urge every single person in this room to define your own success. And you don't have to know exactly what you want to be. You don't have to know how many kids you want to have. You don't have to know what car you're going to drive. Like, you don't have to know the specifics, but define what success means to you on different time frames, and then let's go get it. But you got to come with the goal, you gotta come with the definition to know what you wanna do, at least at some level, because that's when we can really help. Let me help you, Cooperative Learning Center, Advising, Student Disability Resources, Undergraduate Research Opportunity Center. Never seen a school like this in my life for quantity of resources, for quantity of people with masters and PhDs working to help you succeed. It's pretty cool, so let's do it. That's most of my tirade for the day. I'm almost done. Something I've seen a lot. I will have a question that says, what is the pH of a solution of 0.16 molar lactic acid? And I watch people go to Google, and they get they're going to figure out what to do. And they search pH of 1.6 molar lactic acid. Because that's dependent on someone else having put the exact same problem with the answer on the internet, which sometimes happens. But it doesn't empower you to answer the different question what you want to search for is how to do that category of problem. And the categorization, the moving from a pH of lactic acid to how to calculate pH of a weak acid solution going to the general, it takes work and takes practice. But that's one of the things we need to practice with here. So if that's something you're working on and you want to help with, I'm very happy to help with that. Let's see, before we do that, I would like to say that there are no apologies in Chem 111. Keep meaning to put this in the syllabus. How many Chem majors in the room? Okay, yeah, we do that one already. Good, good job. How many of us are perfect? <sighs> not even me. I'm going to do my best not to apologize because I'm going to do my best. I will assign things on the wrong base. I will fix it. We're going to inevitably get something wrong when we grade. We'll fix it. <coughs> Not to grade it as much as it. We'll fix it. And I'm going to do my best to do it. Because we're all here to do the best we're going to do. So to the extent possible, unless you like personally insult me in my family, don't apologize to me either. Just come do the best you can. I think we're here to do this to get jobs. And I know we're here to learn how to learn. We're here to learn science and all that. But like on some level, let's get real. We're here to get out there and get paid. Support families, help the world. Whatever, you know, whatever framework you want to put on it. Meet someone next to you, preferably someone you don't know, but it's the first day, so you may be sitting with someone you know. Tell them what food makes you think of home. Tell them one career you're interested in, doesn't have to be the, the dream job. And then think of a way that understanding chemistry could help you get or do that job. 30 seconds. Go!
to, I think it was the game, and came back and they were driving and they were driving and they were driving and they and they passed up and someone had broke the truck. She goes, Mama, where are those two dudes? <laughs> We met somebody new who wants to share. So we're going to do exercises with jobs uh, pretty frequently, and I'm going to try to tie it to chemistry whenever possible, but sometimes we're just going to do it. All right. Bit of review. This will not be on an exam in and of itself, but a lot of this will be used in what we do, so we want to make sure we're all more or less up to speed. Identify the classes of bonding in these. I'll do the first one. CH4 has covalent bonds. Because similar electronegativity. Between the two elements. Need way more space for this. But you get the idea. Gold, S8, and so on. Going on the hunt for the weird elements.
All right, let's check in. AU is gold. It's a metal. It's a metal. S8, molecular sulfur. Well, what type of element is sulfur? Non-metal. How similar are the electronegativities of sulfur and sulfur? Pretty similar. So what type of bonding? Yeah. Should probably have this in the other order, the Y first. Same electronegativity. Sodium chloride. It's ionic, non-covalent, true, but ionic is the type of non-covalent. Because you've got metal, non-metal, or very different electronegativities. principles to molecules you haven't seen yet, which is one of, frankly, one of the big exercises we do in this class. We're going to learn a principle, maybe an equation, and go apply it to a molecule you haven't heard of, because that's what you're going to do. You're going to take this to bio, you're going to take this to organic chem, you're going to take this to DPT school, so you're going to take this all places and apply, apply, apply. Excellent. Questions or thoughts? Good. Some polyatomic ions, you just gotta know. Name these. I'll do the first one. Good. Actually, let's just do them together. Nitrate. Carbonate, good. You know that one? Yeah, good. Bicarbonate. Why does that get the prefix bi? If it's half? I don't know. It just does. Yeah, ammonium. Excellent. The next one. Gels is losing focus. People keeping him on track here. I love this. It's good. H3O plus. Hydronium. Nice. OH minus? Hydroxide, good. Perhaps one of the more important biological phosphate. Good. There are more, but these are the by far the most common, so these are the ones we'll work with. So, will I make an exam question where I say, exactly this, where I say, tell me the name of the polyatomic ion, SO4, 2 minus, no. But will I ask about the kinetics of potassium sulfate? Yeah. So we'll refer to these by name, and that's how we're going to work. Um, so some of them may be refreshers at first, but the idea is sort of like how we want to read the textbook before lecture, or do something before lecture. Familiarity lets you pick it back up really quickly, and that's the spirit. Good. Sig figs. 6.22 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Can't say that without getting on nerdy. How many sig figs are in that figure? Three. All of them. Good. 0 0.5 grams. One. Good. And I will say out loud, orally, 0.5 grams. That's what everybody does. But 
you must write the zero. And I will always write the zero. Why? Not because of some scientific convention, which it probably is, but because you are more likely to get a job if you do that, because it looks more professional. Good. 5.0 grams. Good. You guys are pros. pHs have a different rule. You'll, you'll notice one thing is that pHs don't have units per se, right? It's pH 7. It's not pH 7. All the same things in these, and it's because they're logs, all the same things come after the decimal place. So how many sig figs is 7.0? One. One. And here's why. How many sig figs in 11.1? .1? One, right. So why would the number of sig figs change just because your solution got more basic? That wouldn't make sense. So this is in part why they do it this way. However, 11.04, in practice, it is extremely difficult to measure a pH to more than two sig figs. Even two sig figs is hard. I've seen someone present something to the chief technical officer of the company I worked at with six sig figs on his pHs, and we were everyone's like, dude, that's not, I mean, it's just not right. And it's not that like people questioned his knowledge of sig figs, he knew how to do it, but it shows a lack of pain. Good. Any questions about sig figs? Any thoughts? Probably don't have too many deep thoughts on sig figs. At least I don't. I'm open to some, though. Cruising. Cruising through. Logs. I don't really have anything to do here. But log is base 10. Natural log, LN, is base 10. If you are uncertain about logs on your calculator or raising something to the 10 or to the E or on the times 10 to the on your calculator, that one can get squared away right away because that is a really frustrating thing to do. Can I have Please? So it's different on different calculators. Sometimes it's capital E, sometimes it's double capital E, sometimes it's X. It's never lowercase for the times 10. Lowercase E is boiler. So again, not really a whole lot to take away from this slide other than this will matter for points. So if you find that it's helping you get, if you find that it's making you get your answers wrong, we'll get it squared away. Come see us. Same thing with order of operations. I don't want to belabor this, but we've seen a lot of points lost for it, so i got to flag it as important. And if it's an issue, we are where we are. There's no apologies, but please come and get it squared away. Let's just do which one? The middle one? I won't spend too long. Let's just try this one. I don't know why I've got three of these here. Try it on your own. See what you get.
want you to always, always feel free to disagree when I put an answer on the board. Because sometimes I will be wrong. Okay, most people agree with me at least close, and we'll take it. Let's do this. I will subtract. Let's just do it. So you can either solve it all the way or you can stepwise solve it. That accounts for the difference in rounding because it'll round slightly differently. Rest assured, we ain't gonna take points from you on an exam for that. As long as you do it right and it's simply a matter of rounding, we're gonna be okay. Please draw. Multiply may be the right term for this. So here I did the method where you solve it all uh, algebraically first before entering it in your calculator. As I said, I'm okay with either way. I think they're both fine, whatever works for you. Um, and I'm going to get either 0.11 or 0.12. Both okay. Good. What do you think you need? Let's make a list and we'll find some resources for you. Come on. Whoa! Oh man, that's not good. How did that happen? It's gone. There. Thanks, guys. Sometimes I get caught up in the moment. Someone said calculator. Someone else said something that I got distracted. What else do you think you need? It's okay if you don't think of anything right now, but as things come up, if you start the first homework and you go, ah, that's what I need. What's up? Thermo. If you start the first homework or you start the, we do a thermo chapter, if you're in that and you say, oh goodness, I know what we need review on, tell me because I can find resources for it. So I'll find some resources for these and give them to you. Anything else come to mind? I have a question. Please. Can you remind me what quantum mechanics are? Mm -hmm. There's two ways to think about quantum mechanics. One of them, the short way to think about quantum mechanics is you're not going to use it in this class. Never mind. Never mind. The second way is that quantum mechanics dictates the way that electrons do what they do. That's how I would put that. That's how I would like begin a conversation with my grandma about them. Right? 
throw that in. Um, <laughs> electrons and their energies are quantized. They have discrete levels. It can be one or two, but not between those. That's the, the sort of big picture of what a quantum mechanics. And then it goes into the particle levels and all the how you do the But that's that's what it is. And quantum mechanics, don't get me wrong, we don't really do quantum mechanics per se in M11, but quantum mechanics dictates most of what happens in chem 11 if we just sort of start at a, a bigger zoom out and look more macro. Good. I always forget something. I can't remember what else I was going to say today about the syllabus and all that. That's it. Uh, I'm pretty informal. So you can call me pretty much anything that's respectful. A lot of people call me John. Yeah, growing up, I was Johnny Geltz. To some people, it's still that. For a couple of months, maybe a year and a half ago at this stage, maybe a year ago, people started calling me PJ in here. And I thought, well, it's not obviously insulting, so I don't think I have to worry about that, but I don't know what it means either. And then finally, I, I got someone who would admit to me that it was Professor John, because there were a couple of people that would call me Professor John, and then they would shorten that to PJ. So I still get that a lot. In the hallway, they'll say, what's up, PJ? <laughs> some people would do that. Some people would make some of them see and go, don't you notes? <laughs> and then I didn't have call it, so I'm open to everything in that way. Um, within the informality, respect is key. Respect for everyone in this room, respect for everyone that works with you. Academic honesty is a big part of that in my mind. Some people separate the two. To me, that's a form of respect. And it's a form of respect for yourself. But it's also for the people that are working really hard for you. You've got me, Alan, Mackenzie, Megan, Catherine, who's in the lab. You've got Horace Owen would help you. You've got Chris Murphy, I'm sure, would help you. You've got Alicia and Donnie from the Blackboard Learning Center. You've got Lisa and Alicia and the other Alicia over here. That's 11, and I'm not even done counting. People working on your behalf. Happy to help you with almost anything. And when they don't know, they will find someone that does. So do your own work. Okay. Without much further ado, I think we should start Chem 11. Oh, but I don't want to. You know what we should do? Let's go to iLearn, and I'll show you different ways you can print the slides. Okay, so we already went through chapters 10 through 12 intro and review. Let's do kinetics. I click on that, it downloads. Okay, here. Hey, that looks familiar. That's what he's writing on. Kind of smaller, but it's pretty sure now. You'll notice I use a black background. You probably don't want to print that. So that's one thing you want to do. I'll do it to PDF so that it doesn't actually show up in the office over there, but you want to go from color to grayscale, and then up, oh, turns it to printable. You can do black and white, but grayscale captures it a little bit better. But then it would still print like this, where you will notice I write a lot of stuff. Sometimes I make space between the slides, and there's not a lot of room to write on these. So you can either print these and write in a notebook next to it, totally fine, or you can go to full page slides, which is here in the middle, and you will see a bunch of options. One is notes page. This is good. Because then it's each slide, still one per page. So there's still a lot of pages, but at least there's room under each one to write. Some people like that. That's fine. Some people prefer ones with multiple slides or ones with multiple slides and notes to the side. So all of these are fine. Um, particularly in the second half of the course, Printing the slides and having them ready to go is really important because it's just too much to write down. When we start putting up organic molecules and proteins and things like that, like, you know, I can draw a protein in here, so you need to print out. And it's important early because it'll save you time to write things down, but if you want to write in a notebook as we go, that's totally fine. But in the second half in particular, you definitely want to have them with you, even if you work in a notebook. 
So there's the quick version of how to print. And let's do it. Any other procedural questions before we start? I know what it was. I know what I forgot. One of the things I forgot. So Master and Chemistry. Who likes Master and Chemistry? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. A couple of people are nodding and smiling. I think that seems like they're laughing about how much they don't like it. Here's what's good about Master and Chemistry. It gives you feedback right away. We do our best to grade quickly, but we do our best to grade quickly. It's not always going to pay back five minutes, right? Master and Chemistry tells you right then and there if you have it to your satisfaction or not. And yes, it requires a precise answer that requires situation, it requires rounding and all that. But here's what we do. I have a thing called the policy, in capital letters usually, of course, because I don't know what else to call it. Within a week of the due date of the homework assignment, which can be found at the end of the schedule in your syllabus, fix all the problems you lost the time. And give me one sentence or even a sentence fragment about what happened. And I'm not looking for great poetry or prose, and I'm not looking for anything like mega insightful. And if you can say, like, I didn't learn that yet, okay. If you say, I understood it, but I did it wrong on my calculator, okay. If you say, I misread the question, okay. All I need is the correct answer with the process, show your work, and why you missed it the first time, or why you got it now. That's fine too. Then you get all the points. That is due one week from the original due date of the homework. So the homework is due Tuesday at midnight, the corrections are due next Tuesday at midnight. There's a Dropbox outside my office, chuck them in there with your name, your lab instructor, and the details of the problems you missed. Why? Full credit, every single homework assignment. Yeah. Oh, Questions about the details of like how many tries, what are the points, things like that. Six tries per question, because there's one of the defaults, and I thought that's reasonable. Six tries is a lot to allow you to try some things, but then if you don't know it after six, I would say time to get help. That's fine. And that's why we do the, or partly why we do the corrections, because if you use all six, you're like, ah, now I figured it out. Okay, good, show me. So six questions, six tries per question. You lose points for incorrect tries when it is multiple choice or true false. So if it's a like A, B, C, D, I'm gonna take points off because you just guess your way to, you know, you can get it when it's six tries. For all the short answer questions where you have to put in a number of units, you don't lose any points for the tries. Even within that though, if you if something if you find that it's not right, you can still always show it to me as a correction and say, I lost 50% because I guessed wrong the first time, but here's why. You can always get those back too. Cool. Good. Correction is hard copy. So correction is hard copy. Um, I prefer it as a piece of paper. Some people print out the master in chemistry and write on it, that's fine. If you want to do it on a piece of paper, that's fine. Um, it's easier for me, like bookkeeping wise, if you put a paper in the folder rather than email it to me, so I prefer that, unless there's some other scheduling reason you can't get it. Uh, and that's not a big deal. Other procedural thoughts or questions or stuff? Anything I'll add with respect or respect? Um, yeah, I tell jokes that are funny and then I laugh. Um, so, with, with, with respect in mind, if anyone in here, in, very much including me, maybe especially me, does something disrespectful, especially if it's me, I need to know because it wasn't on purpose. And I need to know so I can stop. Because I'm not going to try to be disrespectful, but if I say something that incidentally makes this an uncomfortable environment, we need to know because I need to fix it. So you can tell me, I won't be, I won't take offense, I need to know. If you for any reason are uncomfortable telling me, you can have someone else tell me, you can leave a note under the door, you can send them an email, you can send them an office email, any way you want to do it is perfectly fine. I just want to know so I can do it. Hey. Should we start a little bit of connects? Let's talk about why we do kinetics. We'll come back to jobs next time. But let's skip to why. Let's start with why, because that we can do today. 
Flanix is a fairly, I would say, goofy chapter. Goofy is the adjective I would describe it. There are many topics within Flanix. Some people spend their entire careers just on Flanix. No, right? We're going to try covering it in like two weeks. Why? Most of kinetics is um, enabling you to answer questions such as how quickly will this process happen, or how quickly will this reaction proceed, or when will it be done? And I say done because you have to define done. Or when will the concentration be quantifiable? So you have to set a definition. It allows you to calculate quickly, which is time, good, or when. It also allows you to calculate things like how much faster will it happen? If the temperature is raised, how much sooner will it be done? I'm trying to think of an example. Can anyone think of an example of a product with a long warranty? Yeah, cars often do. So the Tesla battery pack that I will not afford, but that I think is cool, has an eight year warranty. You think they tested that thing for eight years under real world conditions? No, man. You can't do that without product. So what they do is they test it under harsher conditions. They test it hotter. They test it whatever you like. And then use principles from this chapter to calculate how long it should last under the conditions you will use it. That's closer to the domain of chemical engineering, probably, because you would be doing that job. But it also applies to biology. You get a fever, you get a little hotter. You need your proteins. How much faster? That's what I'm calculating. That's what it is. So that's why I do this. Let's go back. Uh, well, first, any questions about the why at that level, at the general descriptive level? I'll put this slide first next time. <coughs> Let's talk about how. So that's here. What are units for a rate of speed? How fast did I drive here today? Can you guess what that, so I have a, a diesel Volkswagen that emits more NOx than it should. But in addition to that, it tells me my average speed over time, which I find depressing. Can you guess what my average speed is in that car? 24. 24. The, the speed limits around daycare are very low. <laughs> okay, so typically it's abbreviated MPH, but MPH is miles per hour, which in a science context you'd make into a fraction. So in this case, it's a distance over a time. I now use Google Fit on the smartphone to tell me how many calories, well, to tell me that the, the workout I just did was not enough to counteract the number of JoJo's I ate before the workout. <laughs> what is the rate? What is the rate of burning calories during the workout? Or during a hot workout? Sure, calories per, let's say, minute. Unit of time, right? And pick your unit of time. They all work. Burning or metabolizing glucose during a workout. Units? Well, what units go on the bottom of the fraction? Yeah, time, right? So seconds are common in science, but time goes on the bottom again. How do we measure glucose? Moles, sure. If really any unit would work. You could do, I'll do moles because that's really the universal unit of chemistry, but you could do grams, you could do milligrams, you could do kilograms, you could do a concentration, so a change in molarity over time, but some unit of that measures that molecule, that chemical, divided by time. Glucose has this formula, C6H12O6. Let's 
Let's balance this equation. You guys okay? okay. I'm, I'm talking, sorry. I'm asking the ISA is it good? Six carbons in the reactants so far only one carbon in the product. Six. Okay. Let's do H. Twelve H in the reactants, two H in the products. Six. Now, let's do O. Let's look at the products first. Six times two is twelve O. Six times one is six O's, so 12 plus six is 18 O's so far in the products. Yeah, I'm gonna need a six there to make it 12. Do you inhale glucose? Not usually. <laughs> Not on the weekdays. But you can measure the exhalation of CO2. They have that. Yeah, I think you can measure inhalation of oxygen now, too, for like VO2 max type of measurements. So glucose, even though that might be the parameter I'm interested in, even though that's the parameter I asked about, might actually be kind of annoying to measure. Because you've got to take, like, you've got to take blood sugar measurements every second. No. You can measure CO2 or oxygen and then use the balance equation to debate it. The parameter you're interested in. Someone give me a number. 542.13. Sounds like my daughter telling me what time it is. 72.6, Daddy. Okay. Let's do 13. 13 moles, which is a lot, of CO2 per, let's say, hour. I have a rate because I have a quantity, an amount of CO2 per hour. So this is how much CO2, 13 moles of CO2 of extra each hour. Like I don't want CO2, I want glucose. How much glucose is metabolized per hour? You have a balanced equation, and you have units you don't want. Moles of CO2. I do not want moles of CO2 in my answer. I want moles of glucose. If I put moles of glucose on the top, it will then be on the top in my answer. But I can't just multiply by that. i got to also get rid of moles of CO2. So I put that on the bottom. Ah, my favorite strategy in chemistry. Put the units first before you go digging around for one number to go in there. This, at least for me, stops me from making a lot of mistakes that I gotta go fix. Most of CO2 will cancel, I'll be left with the units I want, most of glucose per hour. Where do I get the numbers? That's great. Glucose is one, and CO2 was six. So how many moles of glucose per hour? Let's give it two sig figs. So you get from rates of one chemical to rates of another. This one. No. Bear with me for one moment, if you would. What's next? 
Well, if you ask me what's next, my answer will be, I don't know. I'm going to look at facilities. Because I mean, we have got a lot of things going on. I don't remember what's next for China either. So I'm going to check facilities. That's what I'll do. Let's see. We did syllabus. We did all that mess. We started rates. Which was the rates. We did not do rate laws and rate constants. That's what I would go read. You might read on to rate laws, rate constants, reaction or integrated rate law. No. Bear with me just one more moment, if you would. We will typically devote the last couple of minutes of each class to reading together. What's next? I have a book. I'm going to say, we just did rates. What's next is rate law, which I found from the syllabus, the schedule of the syllabus. The rate of a reaction often depends on the concentration of one or more of the reactants. Some guy noticed this effect in 1850, and I didn't test on that. So this is something to notice back around here, interested. Rate, what we just did, is affected by concentration. That means I will have some equation that has rate and concentration. Thank you very much. One more thing. One more thing. One more thing. On Thursday, I said we usually have a quiz. This Thursday, we will have a quiz. What will it be on? You might ask. It will no. Normally, it would be on what we learned today. So, good answer. Correct. Except, not in this case. What it will be is the same quiz you did today, but slightly different. So, it will again be math, pre calc, algebra, that sort of thing. So if there's anything you learned today in that, get your pencil sharp at work. Thank you very much.